Hey guys, how you doing? It's Hex. Uh, you'll have to excuse the silhouette that is me today. Uh, the reason for that is that it's hot over here and I refuse to shut those windows or that blind because I'll boil. And I'm, I'm, I'm just not dedicated to do that, guys. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about uh, Salt and Sanctuary. Salt and Sanctuary was described to me on a recent Quest Hard episode, which is the live show I do Monday nights, um, as being 2D Dark Souls. And then uh, last night I got to play it for the first time and I had a great time. Uh, so let me tell you what the game says about itself. Explore a haunting, punishing island. In the stylized 2D action RPG, Salt and Sanctuary combines fast and brutal 2D combat with richly developed RPG mechanics in a cursed realm um, of forgotten cities, blood soaked dungeons, and desecrated monuments. So yeah, it still sounds like 2D Dark Souls. But whereas this game kind of can be described as that it's got a lot of depth and a lot of its own personality and the 2d mechanics make it a very different type of game to actually play even though there are similarities and you'll notice here that it gets very positive reviews with 1162 uh, people saying yay uh, the game is priced at 13 pounds 59 and huh, what's that no steam os logo well the reason for that is the steam version is currently in um in beta in order to get that you have to buy the game or already own the game and you have to go on the steam forums and look for the linux beta and you get password you put in and then you can experience the joy that is the linux beta but honestly guys beta's like a stretch this thing's fucking done seriously uh, the game originally came out on the 17th of may 2016 so you know not that long ago really um and let's keep going down there's no uh, requirements for linux obviously because it's in beta but the windows version requires a core 2 duo a giga ram and a reasonable graphics card i'm going to say reasonable because i don't really know what DirectX 10 compatible with shader model 3 equates to in linux speak so a reasonably modern graphics card uh two gigabyte download uh, i don't think it was that big on linux i could be wrong though um anyway um and uh, a 360 gamepad is recommended however it seems like the developers really pushing the steam controller uh, which is what i'm gonna be playing on a little steam controller yay steam controller um because steam controllers are fab and it seems like they've put enough work in to say that this it feels to me like a totally ready to go game on steam controller out the box no fiddling needed. So I'll, I'll be interested to see if Steam Controls recommended when it comes out officially for Linux. Uh, you'll see people have played it. What have we got here? 1.5 hours, 41 hours, 17 hours, 5.3 hours, 38 hours. Yeah, so people have played it. It seems to be like 20 hour mark. It seems to be where people play it to roughly, give or take. Um, and there's not someone here with the bazillion hours we usually get. But that doesn't mean a lot because the game's not been out that long. So yeah, without further ado, let's have a look at... Oh, no, actually, let's have a look at the official site. The official website is very minimalistic um it looks a bit 90s in a way actually but uh it's still it tells it's functional it tells you everything you need to know if it doesn't leave a long lasting imp impression on you but this is the official site so it's available on ps4 and steam uh no xbox one there which is interesting a lot of it's a steam as a platform rather than windows that's interesting as well hmm, something to note so let's have a look at the game shall we uh, here's the game i'm uh i don't know a couple of hours in um i'm not very good at these games but even though i love them and I really enjoy it. I'm not good at these games. So uh, you can see, uh, talking about Steam Controller setup, be very smart. The left thumbstick, uh, the left thumbstick here, moves my character. Yeah. Yay. Uh, and then the uh, right uh, touchpad is camera control. So it lets you look around. Not only a little bit, but it's still nice use of the pad. And then the, uh, the other thumb pad, the crosshair thumb pad, the D-pad, lets you select stuff on here and uh down to strike a uh, torch yeah and a to jump uh b to interact and uh, uh ah. oh come on let's go no oh, no do you have to hit done i can't keep smacking b and then uh, x is attack y is attack uh you can hold them down and you get more attacks uh yeah and you can do a lot of uh aerial stuff which is interesting yeah, so that's pretty cool. So let's have a look, and you'll still see the uh, up there at the top, just like a lot like Dark Souls. You've got health, and you've got an energy bar, and then you've got all your equipment. If you hit start, you get this, which lets you equip stuff. Uh, it's cool because you kind of don't need to do a lot of inventory management. So like, if I'm looking at like weapons, I click this, and it shows me the two weapons I've got. It shows me the weapons I've got. If I click rings, it shows me the rings I've got. It, it, you know, there's no like massive inventory to manage, which I like a lot better than having an inventory. I like being able to see the inventory if I want to, but to be honest, I find when I've got one of these systems, I, I don't tend to ever use it. But that struck me as being interesting. Um, graphically, it all looks very hand-drawn. And uh, if you jump around a little bit here, there you go. 
what's interesting is uh, oh the uh, right trigger as well is roll, uh, left trigger is block. But I haven't got a shield in this character. Uh, this character is a chef, which is interesting. I don't know a lot about the game, so I just thought a chef was a good thing to play. Um, now I've got a feel for it, though. I might replay as a caster because I do prefer ranged attacks in my characters. Uh, you can see that energy bar there goes down quite quickly. Oh, and one more thing to show you in the uh, sanctuary, which is the res point, is uh, if you click here. Oh, it's quite loud, isn't it? Um, if you click here, uh, you can go to skill tree and you can see all of the skills, uh, which is, mm, yeah, you'll see. It's, it's, yeah. Check this out. Wow, yeah. There was a way. I'm sure there's a way to zoom out. Hmm. Maybe I have to use my mouse. No. Hmm. No. Uh, because one's a way to zoom out. Uh, yeah, it's uh, the skill trees. It's quite redonkulous. I mean, uh, literally. It, yeah. <laughs> there's an awful lot going on here. Uh, um. As someone who I'm right here on this little bit of the tree, so looking at the fact I've got all these skills ahead of me, unless they're all passive and just make you slowly better at stuff, I have a feeling that there's only a far too many skills here. That said, who knows, maybe it'll all make sense as I go on. But yeah, it's kind of a tree shape, um, the same as the one in the background there. Interesting enough. Uh, you can also make an offering which lets you bring statues in, and the statues summon NPCs, because originally this has just got this post here, and this, uh, and you place this monument here to, to, to turn it into your res point. And then you can summon these guys as you go through. Interesting mechanic, but it kind of makes you think, do I, do I need to summon that person? Um, yeah. So let's get some combat, shall we? Uh, the combat is very interesting because these guys here are going to shoot me. Ah, see? That guy there is going to attack me. And uh, the best way to get them is to get them casters first. Now uh, you can see, as I'm fighting, as they attack, rolling away or backing off at the right speed seems to be important to the combat. Because uh, unlike Dark Souls, where it's all about blocking and parrying, this is much more. This is much more in line with uh, with the, what you'd expect from a 2D control system. Uh, let's uh, go in the main front door here. So you go in. This is like one of the dungeony areas. But dungeon's probably not the right word. It's one of the areas that you, you go through. And as you can see, what I said about the uh, verticality, because um, it's 2D, I'm not sprawling across a maze like I am in Dark Souls. Uh, I'm rolling about and trying to get this guy before he kicks my ass. Man, these guys with the guns, they piss me off so bad. You wouldn't believe. You have to get them first. The uh, combination of light attacks and strong attacks seems to be the way to progress. Uh, and uh, roll, just knowing when to roll as well is very important. Uh, much like Dark Souls, the controls are basically very simple. I mean, they are very, very straightforward controls. Once you once you get used to them, you've got light, light attack, strong attack, that's it. Uh, and then you can combine them with like jump in to give you an air attack so that you dive down on someone um, all these little changes you can make to the attacks do make for a nice way to put them together and you can loot stuff as you go as well uh, I like the fact that most of the furniture is destructible I like destroying furniture and being zombies things can re-res uh, and when you die things can re-res and uh, things just randomly come out of the ground in places and um, I haven't seen a lot of the areas yet but you can probably hear in the background the soundtrack kicking in which is this sort of gringy sounding uh, rock guitar which uh, which really works for me actually I really like that uh, it's not got the uh, the subtlety of something like uh, Stellaris but for the type of game we're talking about here it's a really nice and oddly fitting so even though it's not really the soundtrack you'd expect from the game it doesn't detract from it in any way and it really sort of I don't know it's, it's enjoyable it's a good soundtrack and it fits uh, yeah, uh, the enemy variety that I've seen so far is quite good, and each enemy is well designed enough that when you see an enemy, you can tell exactly what it's going to do. Like this dog here, and this guy here with the with the gun, I know how they're going to behave from looking at them, and they're different enough that I don't have to give too much thought into into you know what, what's this one going to do. This one's got a, this one's got a crossbow, so he's going to be a ranged attack. This dog looks like he's going to charge. Sure enough, he charges. It's uh, visual design is very very good. Uh, I think I've said enough about the game, to be honest, and, and this sounds weird, but I don't really want to go into too much more about the game. Ah, there's birds. Yeah. I don't really want too much about the game because it's one of those games where, much like Dark Souls, the sense of discovery as you go through is really one of the things that's, that's great about it. It's one of the things that really draws you in continually. Ah, uh, no, I just have to fall off there to go. Yeah, um, yeah uh, I'll just show you the first boss, which I have yet to finish. Jumpy, jumpy, ah, jumpy. Through here. 
See, this door opens, again, much like Dark Souls. You, you start uncovering your own route as you traverse the environment. You start, like, kick down ladder, find a new way in, open a door that was previously locked. Uh, let's keep going. Oh, no, actually, was it that one? No, it wasn't that one. I don't know what I'm doing here. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and the first boss here is huge, and you can see, yeah. He really means business. He's a lot bigger than me. He's a lot scarier than me. And all in all, it is a fight that he's involved. There you go. Oh, there you go. I mean, I'm going to die straight away. That's great. Uh, it involves not getting hit. It involves finding a way to roll out the way and interact with the boss in a way that's not going to get you killed. And it is figuring things out. And then you res up back at your spawn point. Uh, yeah. All in all, a great game. But again, don't want to talk too much more about the game itself uh, as much as the port. I believe this game uses, I think it uses X and A on Windows, it's F and A on Linux. Um, it is flawless. I mean, this is everything, I mean, the Steam controls are perfect at the box. There is nothing about the Steam controls that I want to change. Um, the visual stuff, there we go, the, the options in the menu, the options in the menu are very basic, but given the type of game it is, you probably don't need that many options. I mean, I would guess that even the Windows version is going to be pretty sparse because really it's just a case of picking resolution and it's not that taxing your system, so there's no point in the scalability. That fire's pretty though, isn't it? That's a pretty fire. And uh, the attention detail in the background is nice as well. But uh, there's not many graphical options for this sort of game. Uh, I have minimized this, maximized this, tabbed in, tabbed out, loaded it, restarted it, forced to crash. I've tried everything I can to break this game uh, because it's a beta and I was happy to give feedback because they're doing great work. And this is better in beta than most full releases it is absolutely rock solid there is nothing broken in this beta um so if you're waiting for the full linux release before you buy it that's understandable but um seriously th yeah this is this is the linux game essentially this is this is ready to go right now um there's no slowdown no weirdness and i have nothing but praise for the development team this is a game that we need more of and in my opinion um it's 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 the sort of thing that the linux gaming catalog He's got gaps in it. I mean, we have gaps. I mean, we've got a lot of survival games and stuff, but the uh, the, the Souls S game we're missing, and this brings that experience to Linux, meaning one less reason to boot into Windows. So yeah, definitely in my opinion, worth checking out, and nothing nothing but nothing but praise really. So uh, check it out. I'll put a link to the Steam store in the description below the video. And if you've liked this, please give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more of this content. I'm sorry for rambling on for 12 minutes about this, but I really like what they're doing with this game and. I, yeah, really, really like it, and I really like the port they're working on. Uh, this just makes me think that just if they can do this in beta, what excuse have these full release AAA games got for not really perfect on day one, really? So, yeah, thanks for watching, and, uh, yeah, I'll be back later in the week with more videos. Bye.